So how many, you know, the Tokyo Dome. Obviously, you want way more than 10,000 people watching your show. But, I mean, the Tokyo Dome, they don't air that show for the American audience. They air it at whatever time, and you tune in at 10 Pacific or 11 Pacific or whatever. And if you want to watch it live, you watch it live. So I presume that's what's going to happen here. And, uh, and we'll find out eventually. But the other question is, the following weekend is traditionally all out. It's all out weekend. So uh, what's going on? Are we going to have all in and then the next weekend all out? Is that the plan? I mean, you know, you could say, well, maybe all in, maybe the Wembley show isn't going to be, it has to be broadcast. I mean, you're not going to do one of your biggest shows of all time and not broadcast it somewhere. I mean, maybe they've got some sort of incredibly well-paying TV deal for it, but my guess is it's probably just going to be a pay-per-view. And then are you going to shoot some big angle and then do another pay-per-view the following week? Are you not going to do All Out Weekend? Is All Out gone and now you're doing All In? And All In will be the show every year now that they've purchased Ring of Honor and they can get the name. I don't have answers to these questions, but uh, hopefully we'll find out all of that soon. We've got another month before tickets go on sale, so there's plenty of time to hash all of this out. But a big show coming up at the end of August. It's an extraordinarily pricey proposition to run two pay-per-views like that back-to-back or two events of that size and that magnitude, even when you're getting production help from a network or from somebody with part of it. I mean, that's a lot to throw out there. Could they creatively do it? Sure, absolutely they could. But is there another possibility that one event is on pay-per-view another event is on streaming we don't know because warner brothers discovery uh is going to have an event on april 12th to talk about direct to consumer stre- streaming product changes or a new drop of something happening there could aew be a part of that could these events be a part of that you know who who knows what it is right now Anybody that is kind of looking down on this announcement, like, I get it. I know sometimes Tony Khan, he's a promoter. Everything he talks about, it's going to be the biggest thing ever. I can't wait to, I couldn't wait to do this for years, all that stuff. And if he would have announced the O2 Arena yesterday, okay, I could see it. It, it, Somebody being disappointed. If they would have announced even Craven Cottage, where Fulham plays, I could see people kind of rolling their eyes and shrugging their shoulders. This is a big announcement. 90,000 people, or at least the hope to put eighty to 90,000 people inside uh, of, of Wembley Stadium. I mean, that's a huge deal because it's not only probably, look, it's not only going to include AEW. It is going to include Rev Pro. It is going to include New Japan. It is going to include probably other big names and big groups maybe not big groups but certainly big names who may work for other groups being a part of this show so to me it's a it is a big announcement and i was kind of wondering okay if if it's not what are you going to say that's really going to dazzle everybody especially if it's going to be an announcement in the uk well they kind of did that, at least in my eyes. By the end of this, I was convinced Iron Mike Sharp is the best wrestler who ever lived. He's low key at first, like, ah, bah, bah, bah. but he keeps going. He claps. I'm tall. I'm giant Mike Sharp. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.